let's go ahead and get ourselves started again. Now we're going to be looking at another workflow for integrating our models. We have been looking at the notion of linking our models using Revit. And in that, we could basically take two different models and link them together in Revit. If they have the same origin, they'll come together and the different models representing each of the disciplines will overlay each other and you'll be able to see all the different elements. Okay, and we also looked at how you can create a new linked Revit model. So if you started with an architectural model, for example, how you can create a new structural model or an MEP model to go ahead and work with it. In this example, we're going to be looking at another tool, BIM 360, and how we can use it for model coordination. Now, you may be familiar with BIM 360 because if you've taken some of the prior classes, we've been using BIM 360 as a way of uploading your models and sharing them with a the teaching team. Now we're going to be looking at some of the additional features available in BIM 360, starting with just publishing our models to BIM 360 and some of the nuance of how you set that up so that all the information you want to have available for model coordination is available available in the BIM 360 web interface. After that, we'll take a look at how we can use that interface and a specific tool called Model Coordination, which has just been added to BIM 360, to find clashes between different models that you've put together in the system. And finally, we're going to take a look at how we can classify different clashes as either being issues that we care about or not issues, just different sort of modeling inaccuracies that we're going to let go because they're not important to resolve. Okay, so let's switch on over to Revit and take a look at how this is going to work. Okay, here we are in Revit and we're looking at that familiar model that we've been working with in the past examples. Again, it's the architectural model for a little mixed use building. And when we want to publish it to BIM 360, what we do is just save it to our local hard disk and then we upload it using the BIM 360 web interface. So to do that, we would go to the file menu, we choose save and we just save it locally. Okay, now there's some other ways that appear to be available through the file menu that we're not going to be using. So let me just kind of warn you about those so we won't go down those paths. There is the notion of save as and you'll find the choice as a cloud model. Now, that's another feature that's available to folks with a certain type of subscription to the BIM 360 service. We don't have that one. So don't try to save it as a cloud model here. Just save it to your local hard drive. And again, we'll upload it through the BIM 360 web interface. Okay. Another way we can go ahead and do that, if you are familiar with uh, working on shared collaborative models, is under the Collaborate tab. Okay. We could use the Collaborate tool and then synchronize the model okay, with BIM 360. Okay. Once you synchronize that model, it's saving your local changes, and then eventually you choose to publish those changes. But again, we're not doing that in this class, although any students who are taking the Global AEC class will be using that method. But again, we're not going to be going that way. Okay. What we're going to do is, again, just save it to our local hard drive, and let's just kind of see what the impact of that is. So again, we save. Then we can find the file on our local hard drive and with the BIM 360 docs interface open in a web window, we can just drag it right in here. So for example, I'm going to go into my space, little Glencat space, okay, under the document management portion of BIM 360. And what I'll do is just take that mixed use architectural model and drag it right in there. You'll see that it's going to upload it, it'll do some processing, and then we'll be able to view it in the BIM 360 interface. After you upload the file, it may take a few minutes for BIM 360 to process the file. That is, just make it available for viewing in the web interface. When the process is done, you can go ahead and close that processing window. Okay, then just click on the link to open and view the model. Okay, so there you can see the model. It's hanging around in the BIM 360 interface. Okay, and we can orbit around it or do lots of different things. We can mark it up. We can walk through the model. We can do all sorts of different things in BIM 360 to explore the model. Okay, but we'll get to that in a little bit later. Okay, one important thing when you do upload it is that you do have some choices you can make that affect how it appears here. Now you'll notice that by default, I didn't do anything special to the model file. Only the default 3D view is showing up under 3D. Okay, so whatever is in the default 3D view, that's the one with 3D with the two brackets around it, shows up. Also by default, the sheets show up. So any views that you have available 
or any sheets that you've created that contain the views, they'll be available in the BIM 360 interface by default also. Okay, and that's a good way to get started, but there are better ways that you'll want to use to control what is available in this because you may have specific views you'd like to see okay, that uh, are other than the default 3D view, and that's what we'll look at next. Okay, let me go on back to Revit now. And in Revit, I'm going to go through and open up a slightly different version of the file. This is one where I've actually created a few other views that I want to save. Okay, so you see that I've created a couple different views in here. I have a 3D overview. I have a 3D section view that I kind of would like to have access to also. I've also created a special view called 3D Model Coordination. And what I'm going to do with this view is use the visibility graphics and the section box to just include anything that I would like to use for coordination. That's something I'd like to check against another model. Okay, so you can use views to control what is used for clash detection for coordinating with other models and what isn't available. So, for example, in our architectural model, I probably want to check the building elements, okay, but I don't really care about checking the furniture because the furniture can be moved around. Plantings, uh, people, entourage, things like that can probably be moved around. So, it's helpful to create a view that has fewer elements, only the ones that you go through and care about. The idea is, once you go through and create this set of views, what you want to do is create a publish set, and that'll control what's actually published to BIM 360. So let's take a look at that. How that works is, under the Collaborate tab, you'll find something called Publish Settings. So again, if you don't do this, you just save the file and upload it by default to get the default 3D view, this one. But if you want to include more of the views, you go to Publish Settings, and you'll be able to create a set. Here I've created a set, and I've added some different views. What you can do is this starts out as just being viewing all views and sheets in the model. You can come through here and just check on different things that you'd like to include in the model. For example, if you'd like to have the elevations in there. That is super. If you want to have the 3D views, I in particular am going to include that 3D model coordination view because that's the one I'm going to use for coordinating my models in there. When I've added them to my sets and turned on the set, that means it'll be the one that's published. I'll save and close. So now when I save things away, okay, that's going to be the new set of information which is published and it's going to look a little bit different. It'll have more things in it than the default set. Let's switch back over here to the BIM 360 docs interface and take a look what the impact is. So again, what I've done is created a couple of different versions. There is the original version, which doesn't have published sets. Here's a newer version that actually has the published sets. And if I open this, you'll see that it actually has several different types of views available. So it has the 3D overview, it has 3D model coordination. It has this 3D section view. So you can go through and choose which of the different views you want to have available. And you need to do that using the uh, published settings to go through and make sure that the information you want to see is available out there in that model. There it comes. This took a little while to open up. Now, when you're publishing the BIM 360, I'm going to encourage you to use a slightly different way of doing it than you're used to. Okay, because very often as we continue working on a file, we're used to doing save as's and continuing to save as day by day to go ahead and create files with new names. And I'm going to actually encourage you to not do it that way, to actually handle versioning of the files a little bit differently. And here's what I mean. Okay, let me go on back out to the BIM 360 interface and I'll go back over to a folder where I've preloaded some of these. Okay. The idea is when you go through and make changes to the file, as opposed to doing a save as to create a file with a new name, if you save the file under the same name, so don't change the name, and then drag in a later copy of the file. Okay, So for example, you see we have a version number associated with the different files. If I drag in another file called mixed-use structural, 
2021 with published sets, what's going to happen is it's going to update that version. It'll understand that it's actually the same model, but that it's a new version of that same model. And that has some distinct advantages. So let me kind of show you why that's helpful to you. You'll see that we're up to version three of this model because I've uploaded a couple different versions this morning to work with. Let me kind of make this a little bigger and kind of show you what that allows you to do. So again, continue saving your models under the same name, okay? But what I'd highly recommend doing is just basically copying a new version up to BIM 360 every night. Let BIM 360 be your primary place for storing the documents. Okay, and don't worry about the fact that you aren't complete with the model yet. Use this as your day-to-day -day storage as opposed to just a place to go through and kind of publish the final version. So if I go in to the file, let's come on over here. I'll be looking at the structural model here. And let me, uh, I'll just look at some of the main structural beams and columns. That's one of the different views that I created. There we go. Okay, so here we have the model. This is the current version of the model. You can actually sort of see I'm on version three, but there are actually earlier versions available. And the reason I like to keep the earlier versions available is we can go through and do some interesting and useful things. There is the whole notion of being able to compare earlier versions. So if we hit the compare tool down at the bottom, okay, you can see I'm on version three right now. I can compare that with version two or with version one if I ever want to go back further, but version two is enough. Let me compare and I can actually see what has been changed recently. So what has changed in this model that I should pay attention to? And again, since you're just world modeling and kind of sharing these files with yourself and with the teaching team, it's not critical, but if you could imagine being as part of a very large team, sort of being able to figure out what has changed in the models that people are sharing with you could be a very, very helpful thing. Okay, it's working away. There we go. So you'll sort of see that between these two different versions, these two footings okay, got changed. They've been modified. And that's really useful to be able to kind of see what's been changed. You'll see what's been added, what's been removed, as well as what's been modified. Okay, let's close that up. Okay. Another very useful thing about being able to, or storing your files out here just in BIM 360 is it actually gives us a way of collaborating with each other. So if you store things out here and you later have a question or you have a question as you're working along and you want some help from a member of the teaching team to figure out uh, what to do about that, there's a couple different things that you can do in BIM 360 which are very useful. For example, we can go through and create markups. Let me kind of show you an example of a markup. Markups are stored right over here. Just earlier, I was working and I decided there was something interesting about this joint. Maybe I had a question about this joint and I need some help about how to go through and resolve it. So I could create a markup, okay, and then share it with someone else. And then someone else can see exactly what I'm talking about in the model. Very, very useful if you're trying to communicate with someone else because, oh, it's much better to kind of just basically put a markup on something, okay, to communicate it as opposed to saving, you know, describing it in words. So there we go. We save that markup. That's a private markup. If I want to share it with someone else, I can uh, publish it and then other people could actually see it too. So the nice thing about markups is even if you've kind of changed the view, you can go back, hit the markup and it'll pop you back right to the same orientation so we could all see exactly the same thing. Now the other kind of feature that I want to show you that's available is something called issues. Issues we're going to talk about some more when we talk about clashes, but issues are this notion that some things are actually things that you want to address and like uh, resolve at some point. So they're not just a markup, they're actually something you could even assign to someone. And you'll see that I've pinned an issue to that footing at the front. I'm basically saying that maybe this needs to be enlarged to handle the bigger loads that are coming down on the front columns. Right now it's not assigned to anyone in particular, but I could assign it to someone in the class and then that person would be responsible for fixing it. So it's just a way of kind of tracking different issues that are in your model. So that's the high level overview of publishing things to uh, like BIM 360 and why we wanna be doing that. Again, if you 
go ahead and kind of keep the file names the same and we can use the versioning and continue to kind of just update those models. We'll be able to save markups and have those carry forward between your different versions. We'll be able to create these issues and assign them for resolution and we can compare those different versions so we can sort of see what changes are being made between the different kind of uh, things that you save. Okay, that'll get us started. Next up, we're going to take a look at, once we've uploaded these models, how we can actually uh, do a little clash detection to find any conflicts between models from different disciplines.